Housing 21 started back in 1964 as part of the Royal British Legion. It's a social enterprise for older people. For nearly 50 years now, it's been providing homes and services for those of us over 55. In fact, it's the UK's largest not-for-profit care provider, enabling people to carry on enjoying the best quality of living in later life. This is Bluebell Gardens in Bristol, just one of Housing 21's many high-quality extra care housing. Getting older is a scary prospect and a big worry for many people. But Housing 21 prides itself on offering an unbeatable level of support and care for those who need it. The organisation has more than 18,000 properties just like this one all around England, with more being built very soon. It's the only housing association which offers a dementia centre of excellence, helping those who are diagnosed cope with the onset of the condition. And with thousands of customers, Housing 21 management knows it's important, in fact vital, to listen to people's views and adapt and improve. So welcome to Bristol and Housing 21's Let's Talk 2030. Well, welcome to Bristol, all of you. Uh, I hope you enjoy the location. My name is Ben Stoneham. I'm the chair of Housing 21. Uh, we always try to use and try new locations. Well, this is an opportunity for us to get together representatives. These are all people, representatives of our, our community, if you like. Uh, these are all people who are active in their local communities, in our housing. They represent people to us in terms of issues. Uh, we, we go to them when we want to find out how we should improve our services, what modernisation we should be carrying out, uh, what facilities people want. So we have to consult and this is a way of bringing them together and it's a thank you to them in the sense that they do that all through the year. Thank you for all you do to involve and all the work you do to help us improve what we're doing here in Housing 21. We do appreciate that contribution and commitment that you give to us. We bring them together so they can have an enjoyable 24 hours um, at our expense, uh, but more importantly, it's also a chance for us to listen to them and for them in their community of our representatives to, get, to give us feedback. They're more likely to do that confidently if they're in a, in a group rather than us doing it person to person. And it's a, it's a chance for them to network, to share ideas with uh, colleagues and um, help us to improve our business. What really challenges you and what makes you um, change an organisation, improve an organisation, is learning from your mistakes and disappointments. That's what really challenges an organisation. And if you can do that as an organisation, you're much, much stronger. And I'm, I'm absolutely... Um, convinced and I'm, I'm, I'm confident that the experiences of the last year and the disappointments will lead us to be a better organisation, better focused and strongly led. And I think that's in the interest of everybody here today in the next uh, uh, two days at this conference. That's what we'll be looking at. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoy the conference. Thank you, Ben. Two weeks ago, we met this new man in Birmingham. And I'll tell you what, he's a cracker. Ladies and gentlemen, your new chief executive, Bruce Ward. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. And thank you for that fantastic welcome. And really a pleasure to be here. This is the start of my fourth week. So I'm Bruce Moore. Uh, I'm the chief executive of Housing 21. Gazing. And the picture here from the 1950s, uh, when people were sort of a magazine looking about what the future was going to be, and they envisaged that everyone would have their own personal helicopter. Uh, and things. Um, well, we haven't quite got that. We've still got the traffic congestion. But it's interesting that... Um, it's a hugely important job. I think, you know, the older people in society need to be, you know, feel that they've got the right place to live and the right support to live a fulfilled and independent older life. And that's really what House 21 is all about. So my job is to make, bring all the resources of the organisation together to make that work effectively. 
They're still going to live in the same sort of buildings, and actually the same social values were still applying. So the women stayed at home and the men went off to work. Well, actually, the big changes in society have been, in the world have been, the change in society has changed our attitudes, not necessarily the physical issues and technology, but actually how we do, and the changing expectations that people have. And I think that's going to be the big driver, and what we need to listen to you about is about your changing expectations as we look into the future. But one thing is certain is that people are living longer, <laughs> despite their best efforts in this case. Um, but trying, you know, living longer, um, and um, you know, it's, it's a certainty. It's not sort of, you know, it might live longer. Or not. We are living longer as a society in terms of age is, 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 a, is a big issue, and it's often called the demographic time bomb. Um, but actually, it's, it's not really, you know, that's got a very negative connotation. But there is an issue in terms of the proportion of people who are in older age is, is growing. So at the moment, there's one person retired or in older age for, for every four in the workforce. Within the next 20 years, that goes below one in three. So there are fewer people in the, in the workforce and more and more people in proportion in old age. So it's not just the physical numbers of older people, it's actually how society is going to be structured. It's going to put some real pressures on. And so the other issue, in fact, is the, so the elephant in the room is attitudes to age. And I think we'll pick up some of this in the debate at the end of today, but also... But actually, where else? The, 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 my, my two got two children, one of them just passed their driving test. And the, the red triangle means caution, watch out. And you can imagine putting caution, watch out, and then other, any description of any other group of society in that label. You would never get away with it. You would be lynched. But actually, somehow, because we put older people in there, or elderly people, um, it, we can get away with it. I think that you know, shows that we have a negative view of, of, of older people. And Victor Melton, we all laugh at, you know, I don't believe it, etc. But actually, it's not, you know, old age shouldn't be about all negatives. It's about fulfilled lives and about positive experiences. It isn't all downhill. And so I think those are big challenges that we face. And I think oh, Bruce is a hugely experienced, you know, he's one of the, the best in the sector in, in, in our area. He's got huge experience of providing housing and services for retired people. So, you know, we went out to find the best and I think we, we found him and he's going to provide a, a dynamic leadership uh, wh which delivers. It's, you know, it's, it's not just important in an organisation to have the ideas and the concepts of what you're going to do. You've got to actually do the business and, and show people that you can make a difference and I, I, I don't have any doubt that's what Bruce will do. Gold earrings not lasting as long as an M&S prawn sandwich. Well we've got various sessions throughout the day. Um, we've got this morning in the regional sections to talk about the different elements in the, the south, the midlands and the north and the different issues there. Some decision making so they can understand how we make decisions and the balancing of priorities etc. At the end of the day, we've got a session which is debating about whether benefits for older people should be universal or more tailored and the different dynamics of that, which very much reflects some of the debates the politicians sometimes don't have. So hopefully we'll have some lively discussion and debate before we go into dinner and the awards sessions this evening. Which of you that gets the winter payment, fuel payment, doesn't spend it on fuel? Yeah, I, sorry Simon, I think that's an unfair question. I, it's the question that people are asking know, about the winter fuel payments. I know, I know. It's what the public want to know. Yes, it's just included in general budgeting. Why, did, hang on, no, Lynn wants to say why she thinks it's an unfair question. It's what the public want to know. It's well, one of the arguments against the winter fuel payments. People I know, but I fuel. think the point is that it's, it's given in the winter when people have a lot of other extra expenses and, and it's common misconception to say that people use it to buy their Christmas presents. We still get, at a certain age, the Christmas bonus of £10. <laughs> now, if, if the political parties wanted to make a political point, I would have no objections to them stopping that. Do you, think, do you think, everybody, that the reason that the political parties don't go for means testing the winter fuel payment, which I bet they don't, is actually because you lot are far more likely to vote than anybody else? I'm Kim Warren and I manage the Dementia Voice Nurse Project. What do we want to achieve, Dementia Friends? We want to have one million Dementia Friends registered on the Dementia Friends website by March 2015. And to just give you some idea, this has already started in Japan and there are four million 
dementia friends there already. Um, yeah, so dementia, it's, it's really, really you know, I think it's absolutely key to everything we do in the future because everybody's living so much longer that we're going to have a lot of customers who may not have dementia now, but they will do. And we need to make sure we've got the systems in place so that they can stay in their, in their homes, the place that they've called home for however many years, as long as they want to. Well, Housing 21 chose us as their um, charity partner of the year a few months ago um, and working with them has been a, an amazing experience for Macmillan. Um, first and foremost because they've just got such a wide There's reaching so audience for us with regards to their residents and many of their residents of course will be living with or experiencing cancer either themselves directly or through their family um, and so they've made a fabulous partnership um, for us. Thank you very <laughs> much. Thank you. <laughs> Big house. <laughs> And kisses. People. <laughs> He's Muggy. He's our Macmillan Coffee Morning mascot. Um, he goes around being the personality of our world's biggest coffee morning, which happens to be our um, biggest fundraiser for Macmillan. Um, it was last Friday, and I know many of the courts in Housing 21 took part. Um, and they took part alongside about 1.6 million people who were drinking coffee, eating cake to raise vital funds for Macmillan. And in 2012, we managed to raise um, 15 million pounds just through coffee and cake. And we're hoping that we're gonna smash that target. And with Housing 21 support, I'm sure we will. Lots and lots of feedback, lots of really positive messages for lots of areas to improve, but also a really fantastic feeling that we can make Housing 21 a really, really strong organisation with the, with the support of the residents. So really good, you know, good lots of fun, but also lots of learning and lots of positive messages to take forward and you know, deliver on for the next year. So sets our agenda. So really good, 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 good time. I thought it was very good and one of the nicest meetings we've been to. So well done to everybody and it was really interesting. It was brilliant to learn everything about what goes on and, and you know, I mean, it was amazing. I thought it was very informative, we have been to previous ones, but um, it was good, it was well done. The only thing that was cold. I thought the whole conference was terrific, I really did both speakers and subject and the, what they spoke about. Particularly dementia, that's important. I think it's been absolutely fabulous. We went last year to York and we thoroughly enjoyed that, but we thoroughly enjoyed this one, it's been absolutely great. Yesterday was particularly good, I thought. Enjoyed yesterday. It may be the end of the conference here in Bristol, but it's not the end of the road. Housing 21 will continue to offer tens of thousands of hours of care every week to older people right up and down this country. Housing 21 management has listened over the last two days and will now take away all they've heard here to work to improve their services and care, to make the future for you better, brighter and beautiful. Thank you for watching. Yeah.